Hey guys, Mr. Taylor back here for the second installment of Taylor Botics. Um, different location, different setting. Uh, we are here, I'm sitting at my dining room table coming to you guys. Um, and you might see a special guest as you saw. Yeah, come here. Can we get up here? This is Riyadh, guys. This is my Weimariner. Um, and she's smelling the robot. Oh, you like the robot? So she'll probably be walking around, popping in and out, but I thought you guys should meet. Say hi to Mr. Taylor's. Hi, guys. So that is Riyadh. All right, sit down. So today, our topic is the touch sensor. We're gonna be talking about that, but before we even go to the next topic, I want to talk about, give a few shout outs um, to you guys. I mean, you did an awesome job uh, watching the video, doing the assignment, posting comments. Um, so it was really, really rewarding um, to see that the work that I put into that video was paying off and that you guys were able to see it. Now, I know that there was some issues um, with trying to uh, download the video or access the link or anything, um, but you have to remember, you are not the only student trying to access Google Drive with Greenville County Schools. There's thousands and thousands of people trying to get on at the same time. Um, so it's almost like a highway and a traffic jam. When you have all those cars on there, it's gonna slow down, it's gonna be congested, and it's not gonna work like it should. Um, so I do apologize. I know that the district is working on getting everything figured out, um, but I mean, guys, we were throwing this curveball on Sunday that we weren't gonna have school. So I think definitely it has gone as well as it could have been. Um, so before I get to the questions, I want to make a even special announcement. Um, today I spent a good amount of time, um, dribble, launching Taylor Botics. Not only do I have these videos that are coming to you, but I have launched a Taylor Botics YouTube page, Taylor Botics Twitter, and a Taylor Botics Instagram that I will be adding to all, um, week and I mean from now on. So go ahead, subscribe to the YouTube channel like the Instagram, and follow me on Twitter if you have all of those, if you're allowed to have all of those social media platforms. So now let's take a look at some questions that were posted by some of your classmates and maybe even you. All right, <clears throat> our first question from yesterday's videos was from Danny, and let me read it. It says, what if one of or what if on the spin turn you make one wheel turn 40 percent power and the other wheel turns 60 percent power um now i love the question um but if both wheels are turning positive then it's gonna go kind of like at a staggered straight uh but i think what you were meant to to ask danny was what if one wheel was 60 and one wheel was negative 40 or vice versa. So I have loaded up a positive 60, negative 40 program, as well as a positive 100, negative 75 program on here to see how that um, the spin turns are going to be different. So Let's take a look. All right, guys, here we are on the back deck. And if you look over there, there's the barn, tractors, things like that. Out here, we just have pasture, things like that. A um, little bit chilly uh, and can feel some, some precipitation, some moisture in the air. So let's test that program that Danny had asked about. All right, guys. So. Here we go. Let's test the 60-40. Okay. And as you can see, it did a complete 90 degree turn. And now let's test this one. 
uh, about the same about the same so I think with the spin turn it's really really beneficial especially if you want to have a nice precise turn um, but you just need to think that whichever direction you want your robot to be facing more towards you would need to put more power on that motor like say for instance if i wanted it to face more towards the right i'd put more power on here so when it would turn it might be going like that or say if i wanted more power onto the left there's going to be more power on that to steer it more that way so with any program, with any challenge, you're just gonna have to use some trial and error, which that's one of the, the questions from yesterday's video. So let's head back in and check out our next. So our next question is from Noah. And it says, do larger wheels result in more power usage? And if so, then if you are going for long distances, should you use the big wheels? Well. Awesome question, awesome question, no. So, a motor. The motor is gonna use as much power as you program it to use. So if you're using a single motor or the dual motor or a spin turn like we did, if I program it to use 50% power, it's going to use 50% power. If I program it to use 30, it's gonna use 30 and so on. But the thing is, and you're spot on, um, oh, look, hey, there's Elsie, my other dog. She's a little bit older. She's older than most of you guys. She's 14, but all right, back to this. No, so you're spot on. If you're going a longer distance, would you want the big wheels? And the answer would be yes, because small wheels and big wheels are gonna use the same amount of power. But as we saw in yesterday's video, um, the larger wheels, one rotation covers more surface space, so it's going to go a further distance. So you would want to use the larger wheels. Thanks for that question. All right, guys, keep those questions coming, and they could be about anything. Um, anything robot related, anything from the video, anything. And I will try to pick a few and answer those. Now, I do have a couple shout outs. Um, Bridger. You want to shout out? Shout out to you. Um, Jackson. Jackson wanted more of his robotic hand. So let's pause and take a look at that gauntlet that he created. All right, guys. So I was able to go on location today to Fisher. Um, I went to volunteer to help pass out packets, answer any questions or so. Um, and it was, it was weird. It was, it was really bizarre, um, on day, day three of, of quarantine. Um, so I just want to show you guys some of this footage. Take a look at this. All right, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was a, a, a little different in Fisher, but all right. Moving on to our feature of the video, the touch sensor. So we're going to be talking about the touch sensor here. Um, it has this little red thing. Touch it in. This snap. Now, I always like to help the touch sensor out a little bit by attaching an axle or a wheel or something that's going to help it get touched or um there's three terms that we use when we're using a touch sensor we have pressed that means it's it's pressed we have release so say if you program something and you set the robot to be pressed when that's released or pulled away Think about like an alarm or something. Maybe you want to want to keep your brother or sister from stealing something. So you might have this pressed up against it. But if they move it or take it away, uh, like say maybe your phone, your switch or something, if this was released, the alarm could go off. Um, 
So we have pressed, we have released, and then we have bumped. Um, so that means when it gets pressed and then it gets released. Now, there's a few different ways that we can code it. We can code it with a sensor block that's on the full uh, software, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Or on your Chromebooks, the extension, you have the wait on block. So this sensor is going to wait on a desired value, or it's gonna be wait to be touched, to pressed, released, or bumped. So let's take a look at the code, and then we will go back outside and test it to see um, exactly how it works. All right, guys, here we are. With my program, I'm programming the sun again today. So let's see, green blocks. Um, I need my robot to be doing something first before I uh, activate the touch sensor. So I'm going to make it go forward. Now, right now, my move steering, it just has it going forward one rotation. I want it to go forever. So I just click this block right here and it's going to go, 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 go. My motors are in ports B and C. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click the wait button. As you can see, like if I hover over anything, it's going to tell me what it is. So I want the wait button, but wait, Mr. Taylor, that's just wait. It doesn't say anything about the touch sensor. If I click right here on the little clock or the stopwatch, it has all of my sensor values that I can do. So I want the touch sensor. I want it to change the state. So that means that if anything's touching that sensor, bumped, pressed, uh, released, it's going to do what I tell it to do right here. So I am going to tell it to, I'm going to use a spin turn. So I'm going to tell it to, let's say, two rotations, and I've got to change this to a negative 50. So it should do, I would hope, a, a donut, a burnout, something like that. Um, now let's take a look at our program and see. Um, one thing I will mention with this full version is on your extensions, this block is the only one you have to do the sensors with. Now on the full version you have a whole yellow tab that has all of the various different sensors and when we get back to school we're going to be using the full version a lot more on those laptops. So let's take a look at what this code is going to do. I want it to go forward pressed donuts. All right, guys, back outside. We are going to test our program. So let's take a look and see. So remember, it's going to go forwards on and on and on and on and on. Then that touch sensor is going to be pressed. I'm going to use this block of wood to press it. And then it should do um, some donuts. So let's take a look. All right, so let's see. Go on and on and on. Ah, oh, nice. Let's try that again. Let's get it coming towards me. So, just like any other code, step by step by step, first step was to go forward forever. And uh, it's a little rocky on this deck. I might have to find another place to uh, test robots at. Um, and then once this is pressed, then it does the donuts. So, forward, press, Donuts. All right, there we go. All right, guys. I found another uh, place to test this. Let 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 me see. Rip. Can I test? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, 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 a uh, few things I just want to be clear with you guys on with our touch sensor. Uh, remember, it's got to go in a numbered port. Our letter ports are for our motors. So we have pressed, released, and bumped. And we've got to use that wait block. So we have to have it waiting for something. It's almost like it's a, a trigger um, to do the next step of the code. So our code was to go forward, 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 forward. It's bumped and then it does a donut. Um, so that's why we use that wait for um, block. And then also why we have the motors just going on constantly. Um, now, 
So with the grand challenge that I've given you guys, how can robotics help in the fight against the coronavirus? How can robotics be useful? Um, I found two articles. One talks about how robots are helping in hospitals, um, like exhausted hospital staff, overcrowded hospitals that can use robots to do some mundane tasks and to help around the hospital during this um frantic time. Another one that I found talks about how drones are being used to deliver medicine. Well, huh. that didn't work like I wanted to. It was supposed to go up and everything. But uh, yeah, yesterday I had the drone. Um, today I had the drone. So be on the lookout. The drone will make an appearance in every video. But yeah, um, drones are being used to deliver medicine. Um, and it's in that article. So take a look. Uh, pretty interesting how robotics is. Maybe it can help you with your, your challenge and your creativity. So that is pretty much it. Go ahead and answer those questions. They should be pretty straightforward. There will be some extra questions today because we're dealing with a sensor. Um, so answer those questions. It's just, you know, what is the function of the sensor? How would the robot benefit using the sensor? Um, what are some real life examples you could use for the sensor? What have you had to touch and something happens? I can tell you right now, and nobody can use this one. Uh, when you go into a parking garage, you have to touch the button. It shoots out a ticket. Then it raises the arm and you can go in. So there's a real life example right there. Also, what problem could this robot solve with this sensor? Hmm, think about it. And then uh, create a code using the sensor. You can either type it out or you can screenshot it um, using that sensor. Go ahead, post it. Guys, again, I'm so proud of everybody that's doing all this work. Um, I wish I was face to face to see you guys, but uh, you, you're doing awesome. Um, every time my email goes off, ding, 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 somebody did a comment, somebody turned something in. Like, I mean, it's, it's almost like in um, the Grinch, his heart grows, 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 grows. That's that's how I feel sometimes. Um, hopefully, I just compared myself to the Grinch. Hopefully, I'm not the Grinch. Um, but again, guys, send in videos, send in comments. Uh, I'll do some more shout outs. Hope everybody is doing well. Um, and I look forward to uh, getting some more emails, comments, whatever from you guys. Questions. But as always, um, hope you enjoyed this installment of Taylor Botics. Yeah.